What's up, YouTube friends? Now, my big brother is turning the big 4-0 on Monday. And recently, Mother got a new table and chairs for upstairs in the kitchen. So that one came downstairs, and the one that was downstairs went to his apartment. Now, he's nowhere as meaty as I am. He's actually one of them bony little bean poles. And he asked if I would make him some chair pads for his birthday. So today, I'm going to show you how to make these chair pads with ties. It's pretty fast, kind of an intermediate project. And I'll show you how to whip them up next. Alright guys, so this video is going to be more inspiration than an exact tutorial. Because every chair is different and every chair pad is different. So the things you're going to need to make these chair pads are... A fabric of your choice. He chose this navy blue. And I think it's going to look great in his apartment. Now because yours is going to be different than mine, your measurements will be different. I'll be using about a half a yard by the length on the bolt per chair pad. You're also going to need some batting. I just got this small crib size and this is 100% polyester. And you're also going to need some foam. Now you could just go buy some upholstery foam. I'd probably get the 2 inch kind, but it gets pretty expensive. So when I was cruising around Pinterest and YouTube, I found a channel called The DIY Cottage. To keep this project budget friendly, she suggested to use a mattress foam topper, so that's exactly what I did. So I went to Walmart and I got a twin size one and a quarter inch foam mattress pad and it was only 10 bucks. You're also going to need a template. Now this is actually the chair pad that's on my sewing stool and this is what I decided to copy. So all I did was take a piece of cardboard, I traced around my chair pad, and I cut it out. Now this will be our template for our foam. I also went ahead and I left an opening here at the top and marked where I want to put my straps on the chair. Now I went ahead and I made another template. All I did was trace around my original one and then I went an inch on the outside and I made a bunch of dots all the way around and connected them. That's going to be for our fabric and our batting. The extra inch around the outside will accommodate our foam as well as our seam allowance. If you don't want to make two templates, you can just go ahead and use your first template, set it on your fabric, and do the same thing. Make a bunch of dots, join your lines, and cut them out. I'll also be using some spray base. You're going to need your iron and ironing board and sewing machine with matching thread. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut out my foam. I just took my template, I traced around it with a magic marker, and as you can see, this twin size is just enough foam for all four mattress pads. I'm going to be using two pieces of foam per pad. Now for some unintelligent reason, they had a sticker stuck on the back of this mattress pad. It's actually right here. It's one of those warning stickers. And I hastily tried to rip it off and ripped my foam. Now last night when I was laying in bed, overthinking the world, like I always do, I had an idea to try to use the hair dryer to get that sticker off. And it worked like a dream. Now there is still a little bit of stickiness on this mattress pad, but that's just fine. We're going to cover this with batting, so no one will be the wiser. I just love getting away with things like that. So now we're just going to cut this out. And because this is pretty thin, our scissors will work just fine. Alright guys, so I have my two pieces of foam all cut out. Now we just want to cut out our fabric. So right here I have a 19 inch wide piece of fabric by the length on the bolt. So now you just want to grab your template. Now if you don't have a pre-existing chair pad that you'd like to use, go ahead and just use some freezer paper or some brown paper and trace around the seat of your chair. That'll be the measurements for your foam. And then go ahead and just add your inch all the way around for your fabric and your batting. Now I do have this folded in half like it came off the bolt. So now I'm just going to take my rotary cutter and cut around my template. Just like that. And now I also went ahead and I cut four two and a half inch pieces by 18 inches. And that's going to be our straps. So for all four chair pads and the straps, I used about three yards of fabric just to give you an estimate. So now we're going to do the same thing that we did with our chair pads with our batting. I want two pieces of batting for each one of these fabrics. Now I have this small crib size project. If that's not enough, 
I also have the medium size that I got at the Goodwill for 99 cents. Alright guys, so I have my two pieces of foam, my two pieces of batting. Now out of that crib size, I got enough to make three of these pads. So if you just want to go ahead and get the medium size, you should be fine. Or if you just wanted one piece of batting for the top, that's okay too. I have my two pieces of fabric and my four strips. That's all you're going to need for one of these chair pads. So now I'm just going to take one piece of my fabric and I'm going to lay it so the right side is facing down. And I'm going to take a piece of my batting and lay it on top. At this point I'm going to take my spray base and I'm going to spray base my batting to my fabric. And since I don't want to get my board here all yucky, I'm going to take it to the next room and do it over there. Alright, so I spray basted my two pieces together here. And now you just want to grab your straps. So for each of our four straps, I'm going to fold over one end about a quarter inch and press. I'm then going to fold my strip in half the long way. Give it a press. And then I'm going to open it back up and I'm going to fold each raw edge into the center and press. Now finally, I'm just going to refold it on the original fold, and you guessed it, press. This time, I like to use a little steam. So I'm going to do that to all four strips, and then I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine, and with an eighth inch seam allowance, and I'm going to sew all the way down the opposite end of our fold. See you over at the sewing machine. Alright guys, so I'm over here at my sewing machine. Today I'll be using a straight stitch and my length's at 2.5. And like I said, I'm just going to use an eighth inch seam allowance and I'm going to stitch all the way down, making sure you back stitch at the end. Now I like to start at the raw end first and make my way to the one that's folded. I already went ahead and sewed two of these so you can just chain piece them together. And let's get sewing. So I'm just resting my two fingers against the strap, putting these two on top, and letting the machine do all the work. And don't forget to backstitch at the end. Alright, so I have my two pieces of fabric with the batting and my four straps. So now we just want to sew this together. So I'm going to have one of them face up, and I'm going to grab my template. Now on my chair, this is where I want my straps. So I'm just going to mark it with a piece of chalk, just like that. I'm going to take my two straps by the raw edges, and I'm going to lay them right there on that mark. And I'm going to overlap it maybe a half an inch and stick a pin. I'm going to take my other two straps and do the same thing on the other mark. Next I'm going to take my other piece of fabric with my batting. I'm going to sandwich that on top. I'm going to take my template again and these two X's are my opening. Now I left a five inch opening. That should be enough to get our foam in, but if you'd like to, you could just do a little bit bigger, but remember, that's more hand sewing. So I'm just gonna stick a pin right here. And at the other mark. And now just to make sure nothing moves, I'm gonna put some more pins all the way around. So 
So now you're just going to take this over to your sewing machine, and I'm probably going to switch out my foot to a walking foot. I'm going to start right here at this pin and backstitch. I'm going to sew all the way around, stopping at this pin and backstitching. And I'm also going to go over my straps a couple times just to make sure they're nice and secure. See you at the sewing machine. All right, so I'm back over here at the sewing machine. My length is still a 2.5, and I'm still using a straight stitch. Now, as you can see here, I went ahead and trimmed my batting down a quarter inch all the way around, and that makes it a lot easier. I'm starting right where my first pin was in backstitch. And just keep sewing. Now when I come up to where my strap is, I'm going to go over my strap, reverse, and keep going, just to make sure these are nice and secure. And with this polyester batting, you really want to make sure that's nice and flat before it goes under your presser foot, otherwise it could get snagged. Alright guys, so I'm coming up to my last pin. Don't forget to backstitch. Alright guys, so I sewed all the way around, backstitching at the beginning and the end. I also went over my straps a couple times. So now I'm just going to turn this right side out. Now I'm just going to tuck in my little opening. And give it a press. Now you just want to grab your foam. Now like I said, I left a 5 inch opening, but I think it's doable. You just really want to scrunch your foam up and stuff it in the hole. Alright, so that's as good as I think I'm going to get it. It did help to kind of whack it on the table a few times. So now you just want to close your opening, and I'm going to use a ladder stitch. Now some of you know I am not a good hand sewer, so I'm not going to show this part. There are plenty of great videos out there to show you how to do it. If you wanted to, you could just go ahead and take this over to your sewing machine, kind of tuck your foam back in there, and finish this off. But today, I'm just going to hand sew it closed. Alright guys, so I have my opening closed, and I'll go ahead and I'll link a video that I always like to use when I do the ladder stitch, and I'll put it in the description box down below. Now you could stop right here and be done. But the one I copied has these little tufts here, four of them. So I want to do the same thing. So what I did was cut out a 5 inch square of cardboard. I measured 5 inches up from the top and then just centered it in the middle. With my piece of chalk, I just marked on all four corners. Then I just took a needle. It's a ribbon needle actually. It has a larger eye with some red embroidery floss. Now normally I would just use a matching color, but today I'm going to use red, and I'll show you at the end of the video why. So I'm just going to go straight down one of my marks, all the way through. I'm going to flip it around, and I'm going to go back down pretty close to where I came out. So now I just want to tie a knot. So I'm going to go around twice, and this is a double thickness of embroidery floss, and pull. And when I pull, I'm going to kind of push down also. Now I'm just going to go around two more times, and pull it tight. Now I'm just going to clip it, leaving about a quarter inch, maybe to a half an inch of thread still hanging out. And I'm going to do that on all four of my chalk marks. Alright, so after the tufting, I have one chair pad all finished. And I hope my brother's bony buns loves it. Now I only have three more of these to make before Monday.
Now, not only did he want chair pads, he also wanted some sort of table runner. So I went ahead with the extra blue fabric and I whipped up this 15 minute table runner. I'll link this video at the end of this one. And as you can see, I went ahead and finished this off with some red buttons pulling from the roosters. So that's exactly why I used the red floss here on the chair pads. I hope you give this video a try. If you like this video and want to see more of my videos, go down below and hit the big red subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up. If you'd like to be notified as to when I post a video, hit the bell notification button. If you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, or would just like to leave a suggestion for a future upcoming video, leave me a comment. If you'd like to support this channel, head on over to Patreon, where just as little as $1 a month will support me and these videos. Head on over to Facebook and Twitter at Scrappy's Patch if you'd like to friend me there. Feel free to share this video across your social medias. And as always, thanks for watching. Happy birthday, Squash Bananas. And I'll see you next time. At this point, I'm going to take my spray base and I'm going to spray base my batting to my fabric. Now, since I don't want to get it up, there's a spider. Get out of here, spider.